So, who is the first one? Yes, please. Two questions. I probably call uh, a racist question. I have not read a convincing argument from any left wing economist to date about repudiating the debt, full stop. I listened to our great comrade this morning, and Sarisa, I take it, in the programme, don't fully repudiate the debt. They repudiate sections. Now, if we want to convince Irish people, particularly in the trade union movement where I come from, that we need to repudiate the debt, we have to give them a picture of what would happen to convince them. And linked with that, exactly the same question about the euro. If we withdrew from the euro tomorrow morning, what would happen to our economy? I'm not saying that in a negative way, but it hasn't been examined, in my opinion, to give a convincing answer to people that we represent. Thank you very much. Please. Yeah, um, I just want to kind of latch on to that question as well. You know, it's very, you know, you know, idealistic to, to say we should just leave the euro. I, I, I honestly don't believe that that's the, the policy that we should go for. I, I believe that the euro has, neoliberalism has developed the structures of the eurozone. And we, as socialists, can <coughs> use that to our advantage. We just have to make the, the European Union more democratic more accountable, more for social justice than for you know the I I industry or for capitalism, uh, and you know if say the central bank was run by the people, uh, the European Central Bank was run by the people, then the euro, the currency would be not the issue. The cur the currency isn't the issue. The issue is who controls the the mechanisms of the European system, and Europe is actually very good because we're talking about transnational uh, <coughs> programs here, a transnational uh, socialist system, a supranational socialist body, right? If we want that to be the case, then the <coughs> best way to do that is to take democracy very seriously and get as many socialist candidates into the European elections. The same way as getting as many people into the, the, the local and uh, Europe, uh, this, uh, national level, uh, as many candidates in. And, and stop this dog fighting that we have in Ireland particularly, uh, of, of just breaking up uh, you know, independent socialists like myself, or or you know, uh, other uh, social socialist parties. It's it's not <coughs> productive. You know, it's it's really not productive at all. Um, and that's just my comments for that. Look at Um I and then my question is uh, to Margaret. Uh, in Italy, the the social movements support. Uh, probably for the first time in their history, uh, not as strongly as they do now, uh, a political alternative through the list for an alternative Europe that they have there. And in fact, they participate in, in this list. Does uh, the, the movement of the tides uh, that you, you mentioned uh, give uh, any support to, to the Esquerda Unida? Or is it something completely movementist? Thanks, Harris. You please. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, I'm Carolina Lopez, a PhD PhD student here. I, uh, I wonder how do you define working class in the 21st century uh, Ireland, and what are the attributes of, 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 of a member of such a working class? Is it is it the income? Is it what is left after? Paying, you know, for the childcare and uh, and uh, all, all the necessary, you know, just expenditures. Is it owning the, the property? So, what do you mean by 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 the working class? Thank you. Somebody else. Then I give the floor to the to the. Who? Oh, oh, please. Sorry, Mark Allen, and the lights. Um, 
I was just wondering, you, you talked about leaving, and I think it, it resonates with everyone here, really, the, the arguments about leaving the euro and, and the punt. Um, I mean, there is a, a serious problem since Maastricht with the whole inflation versus employment kind of criteria within the euro, and it, it seems very hard that we could change that. I mean, I, I do think people are quite attached to the euro in most countries. Um, so have we examined how we can actually look for proper change of the criteria? Is that possible? I know it's probably a mountain in the same way of democratizing the, uh, the European Central Bank and associated. Again, it's a mountain to climb. Is there any possibilities on that? If we are looking at our own currency, there are things to look at there. Um, I mean, you could talk to positive money in England or sensible money, which is here in Ireland, around the issues of actually there are some fundamental things about any currency, how it's operated with the private banking system and how that literally disrupts the whole system and, and inevitably leads to boom and bust, which maybe <coughs> hasn't been examined as much. Um, but with the Scottish referendum happening now, in Scotland I know Positive Money are having a kind of input into that discussion because they're now saying sterling isn't on the table. So I think piggybacking on something like that that's happening in Scotland and England about that discussion, if you are to propose a, a, a viable alternative of a, of a currency, and uh, uh, it's to talk to them, maybe. Um, but what are your thoughts, I suppose, on reforming the central bank and, and, and the currency? <coughs> now, a question to, to Satiris. When, when Troika came to Greece, we, we had uh, a series of uh, demonstrations, mobilizations, we had uh, the squares. Uh, oh, as it uh, was, uh, was presented uh, previously, all this in, in throughout Europe has, uh, well, uh, is not, uh, I mean, all these people are not in the streets anymore. Uh, do you think that Cyprus will be following the same uh, route? Because uh, uh, I have seen uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the television that uh, these days, uh, well, the, during the recent uh, days, there were some mobilizations uh, outside the presidential building and uh, all this other. I mean, will, do you think that this can continue? Uh, and uh, will, will it have uh, any kind of political uh, effect as it happened? Uh, in Greece. And a second question, uh, there are some people, uh, mainly in Greece, but also in other parts in Cyprus, definitely, that uh, connect uh, the, the search for solution to the Cyprus question with the fact that uh, now Cyprus is, is in the corner due to the memorandum. Uh, do you think that this is uh, a reasonable view from, from the apart? Thank you very much. Yes. Um, I would like to uh, ask a question for Cyprus as well. Uh, I, some people in, in Greece say that Akel, uh, the party of Akel, uh, was a responsible, partly responsible, for engaging in the uh, discussions with the Troika that prepared uh, the current uh, solution. Um, and uh, I would like to to to, uh, to know if uh, it is uh, it's true, uh, to what extent, and if Akel nowadays is developing a strategy that is uh, can give uh, um, an alternative uh, way of coping with the current problems. Yes. Who else? If not, so I have a question for Marga. I, I, I found very convincing how you expressed the agenda of the left in, in, in Spain. However, I wonder how this interferes with the national question in Spain. Uh, I mean, I understand that Izquierda Unida uh, makes a strong emphasis on the socio-economic questions and on the question of, uh, of social justice. However, uh, would you say that the national movements, particularly in Catalonia and in, in the Basque countries, somehow uh, distort uh, the socio-economic agenda of the left, 
or uh, is there a possibility of linking the democratic fight in, 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 in the Spanish state with the uh, national, I would say, longings or, or, or wishes of parts of the population? Yes, please. Just to add uh, um, to that question, um, I'm wondering where in, in your countries um, is the most fruitful place to have these discussions. For example, uh, you talked about the ties, movements, and people engaging. You know, what does it happen in in the sort of uh, workers' schools, in, in libraries, community meetings? Are there new newspapers, radio stations? I mean, one of the problems that, that I think we all have is how do we sustain dialogue and conversations and give people a, a place to, to, to return to, to process changes? And I just wondered what people's experiences are, say, in, you know, in Ireland or Cyprus or, or Spain. Where are the places where these conversations are having or can, can be had among, among people? Thank you. I don't see any further requests for the, for the floor. So in this case, uh, I reverse the sequence of speakers and we start with Paul, going then to Sotiris and finish up with Mario, if you agree. And you don't have a choice, so that's not <laughs> <a choice. laughs> We start with Paul, yes? Yeah, well, yeah, well on the Euro, because I think that's the it's a big debate and it's legitimately a, good, a big uh, focus of the discussion. Um, first, I need to clarify what I'm saying. I, I'm not saying that the left in Ireland certainly today should say, put on its banner, leave the euro for a socialist pound, something like that. I don't think so. Um, I, I think, like I said, we have to rephrase the question basically. Uh, the question that is posed to us is, Jesus, well, do you think you should leave the euro? And we say, well, no, we think that people cannot continue to accept austerity, to accept pension cuts, to accept social welfare cuts, etc. And if that means, or we, we don't even say if that means, we leave it there and we let the presenter come back to you or the right-wing person come back to you and say, well, that means you leave the euro. You say, well, people cannot accept any more austerity, etc., etc. I think that's, that's the way that we can turn the argument in our favour. Um, and there was a, I, I wrote an article kind of outlining this kind of approach a while ago and then some, uh, a group, I think it was the People's Movement, commissioned an opinion poll um, whereby they asked the question in that way to people um, in Ireland. They said, if, if, if the only way to maintain the euro was to accept more cuts, do you think we should maintain the euro? And so 72% of people went to defend pensions, to defend social welfare, to defend all of those things instead of maintaining our, our position with the euro. Um, and I think that's, that's an important way about how we can pose the question. Um, because I, I don't, like, I'm not in favour of Ireland leaving the euro today on the basis of capitalism. No thanks. Uh, I think that, like, what would happen if Ireland let, leave, left the euro? You'd have massive economic dislocation. Yes. The capital flight you've had from Greece, you'd have in Ireland, uh, it'd be just a disaster from the point of view of working class people. And the local capitalist class here would use it to establish people's wages, basically. Because um, that's, like, you have a section of the right wing in Ireland, only a small section relative to other countries, but a section toying with the idea of leaving the euro. Uh, like you have a section in Greece, it's, it's those that produce for an export market, don't care about domestic demand and could achieve through uh, leaving the euro and devaluation, could achieve a massive increase in competitiveness. And so we have nothing in common with those people whatsoever. You know what I mean? We, we stand absolutely opposed to that. Um, but I think, I think that the reality is, the key thing is to break with austerities, to stop implementing the memorandum, all those things. And then I just think if you're dealing with the, the reality of the power dynamics that exist within Europe, the consequence of doing those things is being pushed out of the euro. And they push you out of the euro in two ways. One, if you're in the Troika program, they stop funding for your state. You've got to print money from somewhere. And secondly, if they need to, their nuclear option is to bring down your banks by the ECB stopping liquidity assistance to your banks. And that's what they have done at numerous occasions. They have prepared in that direction. If they thought there was a danger, for example, of Syriza coming to power in Greece, they made preparations in that direction. Maybe they'd carry, follow through, maybe they wouldn't, but I think that's the reality. And I think, I think we have to prepare people for that possibility. I mean, the left isn't on the verge of taking power in Ireland. It's not going to happen in the next general election, so it's not the most urgent task. But if the left was on the verge of taking power in Ireland in a year's time, I think you have a duty to prepare people for what's going to happen. 
and that is going to be an almighty struggle. And they're going to try and force you out of the euro. And maybe you will be forced out of the euro, but if, and prepare people and mobilize people by giving people the weapon with the information to be able to, to deal with, with those things. And I, I, think, um, I think there are points about um, alternative currencies, etc., etc. I don't know enough about them, to be honest. I mean, it's one of the interesting things in Greece I was talking earlier is the development of a solidarity economy, um, which isn't just humanitarian, it's people obviously striving to survive, but also in so doing, developing alternative models of organizing the economy, connecting with each other, etc. And it gives you a glimpse of the future, a glimpse of people's power to organize society in a different way, um, and also gives people the tools that then may be needed on a vast scale to do that uh, afterwards. And I think there are uh, things there that are, are useful. Um, just in, which uh, is a related question is, could the euro be democratized? Could the EU be democratized? They're slightly separate questions. Uh, could the euro be democratized? In theory, you could have like a democratic European Central Bank with representatives of people from across Europe. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> um, I think there's no way that the core, the core capitalist classes within Europe, they don't have an interest in a democratically accountable central bank. That's that the whole base of the ECP was set up is it's independent, independent of any democratic check, any democratic control, subservient to the interests of the markets. Um, I think you could raise a question mark over whether if you started from scratch with an economy of working class people, whether you have one currency for all of Europe in the sense of the different natures of the economy, different speeds, etc., that takes place. And that's not the most important thing. And But the second thing then, because this, in terms of the EU itself, can the EU be democratized? And then you have to democratize the EU to be able to democratize the European Central Bank. I mean, the rules are such that if you, if, if, if Syriza comes to power and it breaks the rules, but then it loses its vote with the European Council at a lot of important votes. Um, you lose the vote if you break your rules. Like These are some of the new things that are being brought in. The whole thing is so fundamentally undemocratic that the, the straitjacket is such. I'm not saying you leave the, the EU. I don't think you put that on your banner. I don't think it's the first thing you do. I think you get kicked out of the Euro, maybe you get kicked out of the, the, the EU, but then you've got to build from scratch a different type of Euro. And some of the best parts of the EU, you might, you, you obviously would take on board free movement of people, etc., etc. Um, but I just, this EU is not going to become a socialist EU. If we've got a socialist majority in a whole bunch of countries, they'd just be kicked out. They'd, they'd lose their votes at the European Council, then they'd be kicked out, then they'd be fined, and you have to break more and more rules to be able to not disappoint the people who elected you. And the result is, at that level, it's, it's not, I mean, that's the social democrat vision of like a social Europe, is we elect social democrats across Europe, then we have a majority in the Council, we have a majority in the Commission, everything is fine. But the Commission, it's, it's those people, but it's also the team of technocrats that are behind them, that are all schooled in neoliberal thought. The European Commission is neoliberal out and out. Last two points on, on repudiating the debt. Um, full stop. Um, the best work I've seen done on it, and which doesn't have an Irish context, is Kostas Lapovitsas, um, who has done extensive work on this in a Greek context, um, which is really worth reading, and it's worth us trying to apply in Ireland. Um, I know that Andy's story led... Uh, with others, a, a debt audit in Ireland that only got so far because, like, <laughs> just the whole thing is poorly untransparent. Um, so, like, when we drew up our budget statement, which we wrote the I wrote the section of the UNA budget statement, and that's the basis of the Socialist Party budget statement. Um, we based ourselves on Costas Lapovitsa's stuff and on uh, on the, the work that Andy Story had done and the others in the, the Irish debt audit. But there's a lot more work to be done. Um, but I think you, you can identify, even from Andy Story stuff, that a whole portion of the debt is ECB owed, IMF owed. You're not paying that. Uh, big bankers owned. You're not paying that. There's a whole bunch of what we said is that you paid the, according to proven need and that you would bring it down from 125% of GDP maybe to 25%, which is where it, it started. Um, uh, then the, the last point in terms of who's defined working class in the 21st century. I mean, call me, call me traditionalist, but... Uh, <laughs> Defined by people's relationship to the means of production, by which I mean uh, people who work for a salary or a wage and aren't in a position of high management whereby they're ordering around workers below them and managing things on behalf of capital, um, but basically people who get a salary, get a wage, are exploited. Um, obviously in Ireland in particular, a minority of those people who I would consider to fall into that category of working class, consider themselves working class. Worse than in most countries in Europe, I'd say, the number of people. Um, and it's not like, people won't have to consider themselves working class to achieve a socialist revolution or have elected left government, you know what I mean? It's not the most important thing that people define themselves as working class. 
But I think it is something we should... Every, every time you, draw, you do a press statement or you write an article, you've got to think about how you refer to people, you know? And there's all sorts of funny formulations that people in Ireland use, like working people and ordinary people and stuff. And it's all ways of kind of softening down the working class thing and making it appeal to people. Like, if the Labour Party only ever talks about hard-working families, you know? <laughs> like, people who don't have families, they don't count, like, but it's a way of talking to a group of people that doesn't define themselves as working class. Um, and I think there's an argument for doing some of that, but there's, there's an argument for using the word working class because actually, like, we live in a class society, and class is not only a designation, it's also a power, potentially, and it's one of the things we have to try and win back in Ireland is a concept for working class that also has power, that has, you know, collectively affected by things, but also can take collective action. Thanks, Paul. So, yeah, please. Yes, I start with the uh, question of Euro, for London, the Eurozone. And uh, I'm sorry because it's the only thing from what David said that I am, that I don't understand everything else. I am more or less in total agreement with him. I don't think that the, 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 the way you pose the question is the correct one. Are you willing to accept more measures that sustain Europe? This is not the, the way we should train people. We train people that in, in the direction of an international action against Troika and against what the UMF is doing. Uh, if it happens that in our struggle against their policies we are kicked out of the Euro, it's another story. But again, we warn the movement that in our struggle against the policies of Troika, we have a chance of, of being kicked out of the Euro, and this will cause us, but will be a worthwhile sacrifice to be kicked out of the euro if we have made enough international campaign and expect the support of the internet of the European labor movement. You shouldn't in any way leave a space in the illusion that if things get very bad in the, in the eurozone, you go out of the eurozone and you find a better life. You are not going to find a better life. <coughs> Even with socialist measures isolated, you are destroyed. And it's worthwhile only if being isolated, you expect the, the, uh, the assistance of the, of the European movement. That's why the emphasis is that we are all together in this struggle. You don't speak about the euro. You said something that euro is a tool of capitalism because the central bank of Europe is under capitalist control. If the central bank of Europe was the, uh, under the control of, of less leftist socialist government, then the euro wouldn't be, wouldn't be there, it would be our tool. So the currency is nothing. It's, it hasn't have, to, we, don't, we, don't, we don't mention the issue. Now, my dear friend said that he hasn't heard a convincing answer con uh, concerning the abolition of debt. Uh, I tried to give emphasis on this one, uh, explaining that the huge accumulation of debt of United States, of Greece, of the European South, it was necessary not only for the national states, but for the world system. United States was uh, borrowing to support demand in the United States, but also demand in the whole world. You can find this explanation in many serious uh, capital economies. So we have to start discussing with our European allies, explaining that the huge, unsustainable, and, and a burden that cannot ever be repaired the, the debt burden of Greece is, is not a, a national pro problem of the lazy Greeks. It was uh, in the whole system. It's not accidental that it's the German <coughs> banks that were lent to Greece, very easy loans, very, very easy loans, because they knew that the, the growth of German exports depended on the borrowing of Greece as well as of, as of, as of Spain. As we have to discuss that. To, to have a common understanding, so in the perspective of, of, of leftist governments, we have ground to, to put forward the abolition of debt. There is no way that this debt can be repaired, and it's uh, a formidable obstacle for further development of the world economy. Uh, and this has to be in a great way, because if, if Greece now comes and says, I don't pay uh, my debt back to the German banks, it is very probable that the German population, the German working class, will be under the influence of the German capitalist class. So this may lead to national conflicts that may lead to war, war to, to wars. So 
That's why I stress that it is our duty to, to gain international support in our idea and to build international <coughs> alliances. So when the time comes that Greece cannot repay its debt, and this time will come soon, uh, instead of this being a spark for, for national wars, to be a spark for a pan-European mobilization against capital. That's why the international campaign is very necessary. Uh, I think you put it very nicely. It's anyone who doesn't possess means of production. Uh, okay, these very, the golden boys, for example, of the banks, they don't possess uh, means of production, but I don't really think it's easy to get them, to take them in our hands. Uh, now about Greece. Uh, I believe that the 2011 and 12 mobilizations in Greece <coughs> were magnificent. But uh, there was, according to my opinion, there was not a correct program to lead these mobilizations to a conclusion. So people can be in the streets, can be very heroic, but if their efforts don't, don't reach any conclusions in a short <coughs> or relatively uh, longer time, then they get tired. And uh, probably this is a necessary process, a necessary factor in the process of people, of people building revolutionary consciousness, of, of, of understanding what they really need. People now, now know now what they don't need, but still they don't know how to achieve it. Probably the leadership even of Syriza, which is a very advanced thing, for <coughs> Europe, we are not ready at that time to give a way out. Uh, I think this will be the future of the Cypriot movement. The, again, the leftist uh, party, the communist party of Cyprus, which controls still the majority of the working class, have no idea of how to, to respond to the crisis. But there is no alternative to the left. Yeah, there are internal battles and uh, people uh, question very, very heartily the, leader, the leadership of Hagel today. But uh, <coughs> I believe that there will be a period of, of, of hopelessness and the Cypriot movement will, uh, will uh, be held in disappointment. Of course, there is an international factor today and I strongly believe that the series in power will uh, change uh, things in the <coughs> Europe dramatically. I don't think that series in power will mean that uh, what is the leader? Uh, Tsipras will be able to to imply what he has now in mind. I think that Syriza in, in, in government will have such an effect in the Greek uh, working class movement. They will come out in streets to support him, build uh, neighborhood committees to support Syriza, to protect, him, protect Syriza from uh, fascists, from a probable military coup. Uh, it, a series that will, will be forced to m much beyond of what uh, Cyprus is thinking today. This is what I believe a, a, a government of, uh, of Syriza will mean in Greece today. And the government of Syriza in Greece will change uh, the European uh, uh, framework dramatically. Uh, now, again, it is responsible uh, for uh, the coming of Troika, <coughs> but I'm not very angry about it because, as David said it... Paul. The, 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 uh, sorry? Paul. Paul, I'm sorry. It's okay. As Paul said, the, 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 the space for negotiations with the, the capital class today are very narrow. So, again, found itself suddenly in front of a collapse. They didn't know how to respond. They didn't believe in the European perspective. They, they don't believe in their own people that they can mobilize them and win. <coughs> so they just stood uh, idle. They didn't know what to do and they just accepted the pressure of Turkey. question now. Uh, the difference with uh, 2004 is that uh, at 2004 Greek Cypriots were very rich. 
and uh, the Turkish Cypri uh, Turkish Cypriot community had been living uh, under isolation for three decades. It was a very poor community. So Papadopoulos, the nationalist uh, president at that time, was able to, to, to stand on this. And many Greek people believed that the solution would mean that they would pay for the poor and lazy Turkish Cypriots. Today, this arrogance <coughs> of the Greek Cypriots is not present anymore. The, the collapse of 2013 changed totally. The, so there are many people that uh, see uh, a solution as the only way out of the crisis. And it's good to use that. Uh, we use it, that yes, a solution may be may give a, a way for financing Cyprus, for rebuilding huge areas that are now destroyed, and give uh, a, a, to the economy a, a boost that can at the least last for some years. We use that. Uh, it is important, as I said, to support the negotiations. Anything else will give ground to the nationalists. Uh, but also try to show the limitations. Uh, we are p active participants. Panayotis also and I and many other comrades in this by communal uh, committee. And we have uh, made a number of uh, events on the Green Line of Cyprus, bringing together Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots. Two years ago, we were able to push also the leftist parties of the two sides, the big ones, plus some uh, unions, and uh, make a gathering of 3,000 people at the border of, uh, of the, on the <coughs> dividing line. That was a very big success. Yes, of course. Uh, Harris uh, yes, of course. asked this point whether the economic crisis will imply that uh, we would be more uh, probed towards uh, yeah. solutions that, yeah. that will be imposed to us. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mainly, yeah. mainly this, this is uh, the argument that comes <coughs> from those who don't want a, a solution, solution anyway. Yeah, but, but I'm asking in order to... Yes, to, and to at various points in time, uh, this uh, uh, so-called rejectionist, uh, the nationalist, would find all sorts of excuses, all sorts of arguments, and uh, uh, instead of uh, discussing uh, the substance, uh, uh, the benefits of the solution, uh, the desirability or not of a, a federation in Cyprus, and uh, the ability of the two communities to work uh, together in the future, uh, they uh, put forward this uh, abstract uh, so-called anti-imperialist or now uh, the pressures of uh, economic crisis uh, as a disguise uh, for their nationalist points of view. One last sentence concerning this one. Uh, thank you, Banayolis. The success of the nationalist government in Cyprus has been always to, to show that the acceptance of uh, by zonal, by communal federation as a solution, it's uh, a bad thing for the Greek Cypriots. We accept it as a discussion, but this and the other, and when it comes <coughs> to the point of voting, we vote no. Uh, this has been an accepted framework. And the important thing for us Greek Cypriot socialists is that it is accepted by the vast majority of the Greek, of the Turkish Cypriot <coughs> left, and of the Turkish Cypriot labor movement. This is a key factor. So as long as the Turkish Cypriot accept it, and as long as the, it is a framework in which you have been negotiating for decades, that's the acceptance we fight for it. Of course, we show the limitations of the discussions, negotiations taking place today. And we also show the limitations, if you want, of the, social, of the federation and the capital. <coughs> But by mobilizing the movement, we don't come against this uh, process. We support it and we try to to put to push it even further than the capitalists can take it. Anything against the negotiations, because they are supposedly supported by the Americans, it's a leave service to nationalism, and we avoid that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maga, please. Very briefly, uh, I, I do promise. Professor Jacobson said this morning to us how much the U.S. has influenced Ireland in a way, not only of the cultural way, but also the way the capitalist, American capitalism is acting. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, in Spain, we are influenced by Latin America, too. <coughs> so, uh, answering the question, what happens if we refuse to pay the debt? 
The first time in history a government said no to the FMA, uh, International Monetary Fund, I'm not going to pay the debt, was Argentina with Nestor Kirchner as the president. <coughs> and uh, they paid the debt, but in a, with other conditions. And the Argentina government put the conditions and they negotiate uh, all that the, the country had. And nothing happened. 15 years before, probably a coup d'etat, a military coup d'etat, we resolved the question, but not now. And after Nestor Kirchner, uh, it followed by Evo Morales in Bolivia, and of course in Venezuela with Hugo Chavez. So it is perfectly possible. And the second example I wanted to share with you was Evo Morales, the nationalization of the, uh, of the gas and the petroleum in, uh, in Bolivia. The president of my country, uh, for our shame forever, went to Bolivia to say, Evo Morales, please don't nationalize the, the private companies who were the Spanish companies, most of them. Menacing them with all sorts of uh, terribles and evils and demons coming to Bolivia to destroy the Bolivian company. Nothing happened. In two months, the companies were there sitting with Evo Morales, renegotiating again the contracts. So, of course, it is possible. I mean, at least to say, no, we're not going to pay this, or are we, at least we are going to decide democratically, in a democratic way, how and who and when are we going to pay. The second question had is asked me, these ties, these movements in Spain, I mean, they are not political movements, citizen movements. Of course, they are against the government, especially the educational movement. It's clearly uh, against the right-wing party, but not the health movement, because a lot of doctors, professionals, are, you know, professional sector. I went to a taxi driver in Madrid, which is the most conservative sector all around the world. Demanding to sign that <coughs> against the privatization of one hospital. So that demonstrates to me that maybe that people vote for the uh, right wing party that was against the privatization of that hospital. So, of course, it's getting only my political party is growing, but not so fast as the movement it is. And two uh, uh, only things were to, to meet with uh, everybody, and what a lot of people try to talk each other to integrate the networks. Well, at least in Spain, it's a sunny country where we used to do it in, in, the, in, the, in the streets. But anyway, uh, anywhere, uh, it doesn't matter. The, the question is to take one point or one issue and try to organize all this uh, networks to fight against that. And finally, of the question of Catalonia region and the Basque country in Spain, which is completely different, please don't confuse them. Uh, of course, the national question, the nationalist question in Catalonia is disturbing everything in Spain related not to talk about the crisis, not to talk about the working class condition because the nation is the most important. Uh, for both the right wing party with, with a uh, old fashioned nationalist, a Spanish nationalist, which is, you know, imperialism, Catholicism, things like that. Huh? And on the other part in the Catalonia, there is the right wing party also a nationalist one who is not. Uh, in Catalonia, so it's not a left perspective only. But it is true it, that there is a, a movement in Catalonia also for a constituent process inside Catalonia. It's the same as the whole country, but inside Catalonia, trying to establish a Catalonian Republic, which is really historically in Spain, it's not a strange for us, you know, because it was based 100 years ago. So it's, it's quite help, helpful for us in order to, to, to go to this democratic path in the whole country, not only in Catalonia, but not in the Basque country. The Basque country is, is another issue. I mean, uh, as you know, the right-wing party who is ruling um, in the government now in Spain, they love the question of ETA, the terrorism, because they, I mean, you know, they feed each other a lot, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, all the time. <laughs> so it's, it's another question, and it's not in the process of any democratization or things like that in the Basque country, but anyway. I think we have an opportunity and the only uh, to insist to you into studying more about the Latin American cases in which I'm sure a lot of Spanish people have learned. Thank you very much. Yes, please take a coffee. Uh, we make a, a break for five minutes, ten minutes, and then we continue with the panel and the manifesting the new habits.